There is a vastly underrated force in this world, one that is so undervalued, it is amazing. The world just plunders on as if it doesn't exist. The force I'm referring to is dialogue. I know that is so strange to refer to that as a force, but you've been in a conversation, you've talked to someone, and something's come out that you, you couldn't have got there by yourself. And they couldn't have got there by yourself. You stretched them, they stretched you, and something came out. One plus one equaled more than two. There's an easy way to kind of conceptualize this in an image, is that you have a frame, a way of looking at the world, a lens, um, a, a picture. Think of a picture. You have a picture of the world, and they have a picture of the world. Yes? Okay. They overlap at a certain extent. Mostly. 90% overlap, but that extra 10%, that's where you stretch them, and that is unknown territory for them. You're very familiar with it because it is your picture, it's your lens, it's your framing of the world. You feel quite comfortable there. They're being stretched out. There's like, oh, what's, what's all this possibility? I've never noticed the trees in that way. I can't name any of the trees. I don't look at a cup as a weapon. Why the hell would you look at a cup like a weapon? It's because I am Zorro. I am a uh, fucking Denzel Washington in some badass movie or whatever it is. Okay, I'm, I'm playing around here. I'm exaggerating. I'm being a bit facetious. But do you get the analogy? Do you get that imagery that you stretch someone out in a way where you're familiar, but they're not. And they stretch you out in a way that they're familiar, but you're not. And by doing that, we make ourselves more than. Okay, now the world is continuing on pretending that this doesn't exist. And we text each other now, which is a dead form of conversation. And I don't mean it doesn't have a purpose. We can trade facts doing that perfectly and I can fit in more facts into it. I can think it through and make it perhaps even more poetic if I've been really artsy about it, but who's doing that? Um, but I can give better advice perhaps and I can make my joke a little bit more clever or whatever it is, but it's not alive. It's not in the moment. It is not a game of tennis played properly. So like I'm not trying to denigrate it totally. It is good. It has a place but it's not an alive conversation. It's not a true dialogue. A true dialogue is where you get lost, is where those moments of stretching each other add up so that the conversation ends up in somewhere that you didn't even imagine. They're the best conversations. The ones where, like how we got there, I do not know. They're the ones that light me up. They're the ones that give me a smile. They're the ones that the workshops are based on. But anyway, I digress. Today's video, I don't want to talk about the social aspect, as in, eventually, I'm, 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 I'm trying to do the workshops, I'm trying to get people to value that type of conversation and that type of relationship and all the rest, and eventually we'll come around to find different ways. It might not be the workshops, we'll, but we'll, that'll change. But for today, what I do want to do is, how many dialogues do you have in your life? I don't mean with people, I mean with things. As children, we had favourite teddies, favourite blankets, favourite songs, favourite movies. We had uh, favourite characters and we would pretend to be those characters. And we would see the world as if we were Zorro. Or we would see the world, for me, as if I was Simba. Um, or Timon and Pumba. Uh, <laughs> and you would sing and be happy and be merry. And you'd look a bit more closely at the bugs and stuff like that. Would I eat that one? Um, <laughs> again, I digress. But that, I want to recapture that imagination, that creativity. And why do I want to do it? Do I want to, to, to do it purely for play, purely for fantasy, so we can get lost and leave this drab, dreary, grey world behind? No, that is not the purpose. The purpose is to see the world a little bit different, just like in the good conversations, in the good dialogues, that that lens while it overlaps mostly with your current lens, it stretches you a little bit. It opens you up. And hopefully you have like some sort of safe place where you can open that up. But this isn't safety. This is something that is hooking you to bring you out. It is calling you out. 
and you participate differently in the world. You act differently. You act in a way that is not your normal pattern. And therefore, the world responds to you a little bit differently and that can make all the difference. This is what participation in the world and that participatory knowing, for about the four types of knowing, but we won't get lost too much in the theory and abstract for today. Today, I want to ask you simply how many things you dialogue with. So, is this a fantasy that we escape in? No, distinctly not. This is trying to stretch the way we look at the world so that we see things differently. Is it imbuing things with power? Uh, think of your crystals and your stones. Um, I dislike them for this reason, but if used properly, they can be interesting. Without this stone, I feel no bravery. I'm miss. I'm like the lion in the Wizard of Oz. I'm. I just don't have courage because I'm missing the stone. No, distinctly not. What you would do, the healthy way of using that, is when I'm holding the stone. What would the courageous side of me say now? What would it think? How would it feel in its body? How would it see the world? What opportunities would be here if I had that courage? This doesn't mean I have it, but I'm simply seeking to find something to aspire to. What does it look like? I'm allowing myself, I'm affording myself a bit of imagination just to see whether I would like to aim in that direction. Whether I get there or not, I don't know. Whether I'm able to get there or not, I don't know. But fleshing out and dialoguing with that version, that future version, is, is very healthy. So if life is a mystery, how many different perspectives can we get to look at it, to try and figure it out, to let it open up and unfold in the most beautiful way? Yes, we have courage. Yes, we have uh, authenticity, as the one I always go on about. Uh, we have temperament. We have imagination. We have creativity. We have joy. We have hope. We have friendship and caring and all the other virtues that, again, we talk about in the workshop. <laughs> but, uh, but you don't have to do it strictly with virtues. What would your favorite character say? Okay, what would... Okay, you, everyone has a phone. What would some tech person say? If they were super analytical and just purely practical, what would they say about your situation, about your problem right now? And even the act of putting your problem into third person is very beneficial, just by the way. Then you, like each of you have a wallet. What would a business finance guy say about your problem right now? What would, you might have car keys, I don't know, but um, what would a mechanic, the, the feet in the earth sort of down to earth sort of guy say just, what would he say about your situation? Um, again, whatever, whatever stereotypes you can have, I'm not here to judge or be PC culture or anything like that. Just, it, it's not about who the character is or what they are. It is about getting a perspective other than your own and really feeling it. What would they say with their head? What would they feel with their heart? What sort of primal energy would they channel, would they have going about the world? That is my question for you this week. That is my challenge to you this week. For this video, I'm using waters, scented waters. And that one's meant to be for creativity. So doing this, I'm thinking, I'm smelling. What would the creative side of me do right now? How would it deviate from the kind of main point of this script? How can it be artistic instead of just purely logical and purely like mathematical? Because that doesn't convince anyone. And yes, I know I deviate too much at times. But if I did it right, if I did it well, I could be the next Alan Watts. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> either way opening ourselves up is what this whole thing is about this whole earthly presence seems to be it, it's the best way to enjoy life it seems I'd, it seems <laughs> is to is to be 
is to have the full range of emotions available to you, to have the full range of perspectives available to you, to play around and have the full potential possibilities around you available instead of narrowing yourself down where I have to behave this way and I have to do this because duty and needs and expectations and everything else that makes us narrow. That is that is crippling, that is depressing, and it's also very uh, closely linked to addiction and stuff like that, is that narrowing down so that there's no other possibilities. So getting ourselves to open back up and see possibilities and get rid of most of them because half of them are daft, but just playing around with that and having a bit of imagination, having a bit of creativity, creativity and having a bit of fun and play in our lives is essential and um, can break you out of any bad mood or any sort of thing, um, kind of. <laughs> but um, even if it doesn't, it's, um, it's a nice thing to have. So with that, there's the challenge. How many different things do you talk to where you get its perspective on your world? How many? Honestly, think about it and play with it for a little bit. Add it. Like, yes, you might have some lucky underwear. You might have some um, favorite shirt or like a, a, an inheritance, like a, a bracelet or a necklace or something like that where it symbolizes something. All of these superstitious things that in the last 20 years we made fun of because we're scientific and we're better than that. And again, if we imbue it with magic, well then that's not the way to do it. But if we look at the world through its symbolism and what it represents and how it stretches us, that is a superpower and nothing to be laughed at. And I will take on any scientific academic person that says otherwise. So that is today's video. I hope you've had a great week. I hope you're going to have a great week for the one that's coming. And guys, enjoy. I will see you in the next one. Bye.